board. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another great meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee and the Design Subcommittee. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the Town of Amherst. This meeting is being recorded and at some point soon will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Welcome, everyone. At this time, I'd like to turn things over to the chair of the JLBC, Professor Austin Serrett. Thank you, Angie. So uh, I want to call to order this meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee. I'm just going to ask you to um, signify your presence vocally. George? Here. Thank you. Christine? Here. Thank you. Sean? Here. Sharon? Here. Alex? Here. And Austin Sarrett is here. So we are called to order. Christine, would you please call to order the design subcommittee? Uh, sure, I'm going calling to order the design subcommittee. Uh, I think all four members are here. I'll call out George. Here. Aus um, Sharon. Here. Austin. Here. All four of us here. Open. Okay. Thank you very much. So first item of um, business for the building committee is the approval of the minutes of January 26th, 2023. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Thank you. Any uh, corrections to the minutes of January 26th? Okay, voting to approve, George. Approved. Thank you, Christine. Yes. Thank you, Sean. Yes. Sharon. Yes. Alex. And Austin votes yes. Okay, Christine, I think you have some minutes. So um, we also have the same January 26 uh, minutes for the design subcommittee. So I'm looking for a motion to approve. So moved. A second. Second. Any changes, suggestions? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Sharon? Yes. George? Yes. Austin? Yes. Myself? Yes. Four. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. The town manager is not able to be present, so um, no town manager report. Uh, next item is a financial update, Sean. So um, Craig's going to go through a quick budget review in a minute. I'll just give a really brief update on contracts. Um, obviously, Stefer is with us today. Uh, we're, we're finalizing that contract probably in the next day or two, but Paul's given the oral uh, green light on that, so it makes sense for them to be here tonight. Um, we are still evaluating uh, commissioning proposals that we received um, and working with FAA about to, to analyze the different variations of commissioning services that we could bring on. Um, there's some required pieces and there's some pieces that aren't required and then looking at how it all fits within our budget. So that will be uh, probably coming up in the next week or so. And then we do have a proposal as well, well from Collier's that we're going to meet with Collier's tomorrow. Um, uh, again, because the project has stretched out longer than it was originally anticipated, um, we've had to enter into discussions with the Colliers about how to compensate them for their services through the longer schedule that we have now. Um, so we're going to start that conversation tomorrow, and I'm sure we'll have more information um, for the committee uh, in coming weeks. And then, Craig, do you want to do the budget update? Absolutely. Thanks, uh, may I share my screen? You may, Craig. Thank you. I'm not having any luck, Sharon. Are you able to? Sorry, Craig, I just made you a co-host. Does that give you an opportunity to share your screen? It does. Thank you. Excellent. No problem. Thanks, Angie. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here is our latest financial status report update. Um, let me zoom in a little bit here. Sorry, I'm fighting with my screen size here. I might not be able to zoom in. Okay, so uh, just a reminder, a refresher, column A, 
is the budget line item. Um, B and C are for transfers, which we haven't done any transfers yet. Um, D1, D2, D3 are for what has been invoiced and paid, what's been invoiced and not paid, and total contracts that are um, have been executed. And then we've got column E, which is planned but not contracted. So we've got a, a series of numbers in here that I'll quickly go over, um, new numbers. And then column F wraps that all up to the total. And then column G is the difference between our uh, total budget and uh, what we're seeing actually. So uh, we've got three pages. So the first page is uh, all things that we don't have yet, the actual construction uh, but uh, costs. Page two, we get into some of our fees and this is where we have some information. So um, you'll see um, VA2, the design team. If we go all the way over to column G, we see that we've got, is, is this large enough? Can you guys see the numbers? Yeah. Okay. Um, 55,000, everything here is in thousands. So we are $55,000 over budget, quote unquote, over budget. And that's just because we started with their base contract. And you'll recall, um, we they have a $55,000 additional service that was approved. So at some point, what we'll do to clean up all these numbers is we'll transfer money either from line items that have a surplus or more likely from our um, owner's contingency. But we won't do that for every little $1,000 here, $2,000 there, $55,000. We'll wait till we've got sort of a, a clearer path and then we'll start um, adjusting those money. If if that's, uh, that would be my recommendation just so um, it's more efficient instead of doing every, every little item. Uh, but we can talk about that. Uh, below them, the interior furniture designer. So Stephora's pro, um, proposal and pending contract uh, was for 102,000. Uh, the budget was 100,000. That's why we've got this $2,300 uh, overage. Same thing, we'll take care of that later from another item or um, owner's contingency. Moving down the page, uh, what Sean was talking about, that commissioning. So we had budgeted $80,000 for all of the commissioning activities. Um, just as a placeholder, I put in the um, the code required minimum, uh, which is uh, MEP during construction, that commissioning, and that was like $86,000. And then I added in, uh, for discussion purposes, uh, an item that Feingold Alexander is um, and, and my office both strong, highly recommend, but again, up for discussion. And that is the MEP commissioning agent's involvement during the design phase where they can actually have a, a, a measurable impact to the, say the quality or the completeness of that package. Um, so if we go for those two, then that does put us $36,000 over budget on that line item. But again, this is just kind of a placeholder. Uh, owner's cost estimator uh, at present, we have um, an extra five and a half thousand dollars in that bucket where we believe their uh, their contract is already um, executed. And so maybe there is an additional cost estimating service down the road or outside of the scope of their but uh, their contract that we want. Or maybe this is some way that, say, takes care of that overage and um, furnishing uh, interior design. Moving on to page three, um, the only thing that I we've changed here, oh, and actually backing up to this one. So Sean did mention uh, OPM. I think Craig froze. Um, site survey, sorry, back on page Craig, two. Site Craig, you froze a little bit before when you mentioned the uh, owners, the OPM. Uh, perfect timing for yep. an internet hiccup. Yep. Can you hear me clearly now? Yes. Okay. So uh, I was saying that I have not reflected that um, OPM services proposal letter in this yet. I wanted to speak with Paul and Sean first before putting that in there. So that should show up. Whatever it ends up being will show up uh, in next month's update. Um, site survey. Again, this is planned but not contracted. Um, we have $10,000 uh, 
Uh, there has been some additional survey work that, uh, requested. Actually, it turns out it was the DPW recommended it of uh, Berkshire, which is um, uh, Feingold Alexander's consultant um, for this dark blue area. So DPW said, hey, we don't have, as I understand it, they said, we don't have accurate information or totally up-to-date information. We recommend if you're tying into stuff, do your own survey. And so we have a, we're waiting for that proposal. And so, as I mentioned, there's a $10,000 sort of in that bucket. Sorry, I lost my spot. Um, moving on to page three, the only thing I've changed here is, uh, you may recall from early on when we first started looking at these reports, the whole concept of additional need, we've got these two buckets of money, one for the owner to dispense and one that we want to keep for construction issues, unforeseen construction issues. So that you don't, so it doesn't look like we've got um, $3 million extra just hanging around um, as, a, as an accounting technique. We have this additional need where we just basically zero things out. So um, that's the only thing I've changed on this page since the last time we looked at it was just so that um, this number here remains at zero. Are there any questions about the financial status report? Before entertaining others, could you just the last, I want to make sure I understand the last item, the total contingency was 3.3. .3. It's now, I see now 3.2. So there's some savings anticipated? Um, no. So, so this additional need kind of works at, as the um, opposite side of the coin for um, contingency. So the contingency is money you've got in your pocket, and this additional need is saying, yeah, but we're going to spend that. So uh, it doesn't show up as an overage. Again, it's just an accounting technique. If you um, prefer. Uh, yeah. No, no. The question I'm asking, if you go to the bottom there, where it says total contingency. Total contingency right here. No, three, no, three keep, million. Going, keep going over to the right. Yep. And it shows 87.8. Yes. So, so that. That 87.8 is all these little overages here. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. 87.8. You got it. Yep. Thanks. Very helpful. Okay. Questions about the budget. Okay. Thank you, Craig. Alex. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Um, is now the time that we need to talk about um, that additional MEP? Uh, if we're gonna do that, when at what point do we need to have that conversation? Craig, um, Sean, are you um, in favor of us? We can pull that up and, and talk about it now. It wasn't on the agenda tonight. Um, and That's fine. Yeah, yeah, I think if it's possible, Alex, if we could wait till next week, because we're meeting with um, Colliers tomorrow, and I'm sure Great. we can Great. talk about that and then be ready to discuss it next week. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, if nothing else on the budget, Sean, I mean, Sean Craig. Yes, thank you, Austin. All right, so I'll share my screen again. Right, I believe it's the schedule that I'm showing now. Here we are. So um, only change from last week is nudging over our vertical red line indicating where we are. And we can see that we've been through uh, one full month of design development which uh, is a four month process. Um, nothing else. Having these meetings every week is, is handy uh, because there aren't any big changes in between from one week to the next. Does anyone have any questions about the schedule? Mm, Alex. Um, thanks, Craig. It looks like the secure space for the temporary um, is in February, March, and April. Yes. Um, so uh, Sharon and I have a call um, scheduled for tomorrow um, in order to move that, open that up again. We haven't spoken in a number of months about that temporary space, what it looks like, uh, how, how much money there is, what's available in town. Um, so we'll, we'll rekindle that discussion tomorrow. Uh, but yes, we're entering. These are kind of placeholders secure the space. When I say secure the space, mm -hmm. that means kind of get it lined up and, and um, under contract. Um, the next step would be if any modifications need to be made, um, 
we've got, uh, I think it's five months to sort of figure that out. And then two months for someone to execute those changes as needed. And then move in would be in December. So basically we have a, about a year, just under a year to kind of get that squared away. Um, so this is not a deadline by any means. This is more of a, a reminder that, okay, we've got to, we should be moving into that stage now. And that whole, that conversation about the offsite uh, space will be uh, brought to and reviewed by the board of trustees of the, of, of the library as well. Okay, anything else about the schedule? Okay, Craig. So tonight we have with us uh, the design team as well as um, Sephora. And so what we propose is going through the interior, similar to last week with landscape, we go through the interiors first. Um, that way, after all that discussion is done, uh, we can excuse Sephora so they can get on with their evening. Uh, then we can talk about the, uh, the the design team wants to show a new uh, young adult program location and how that's kind right. of shaking out. And then finally, we can talk about the uh, gender inclusive toilets. Um, and then for everyone else. Craig, sorry to interrupt you. At each stage of this, it would be very helpful if you would remind the committee of what it is that you are, are asking for each of these things from the committee. Absolutely. Um, so the one decision that is necessary for tonight is the um, direction uh, on the Craig young adult program. Frozen again. Okay, good. Okay, sorry. It is they need, uh, The design team needs direction on the young adult program location. So that'll be the second thing we discuss. The first thing is going to be the interiors. And uh, that is a, they're going to show it tonight. If you feel compelled to decide on it tonight, great. But if not, um, that is a decision we can make at next week's meeting. And okay. then the restroom decision, same thing. If you feel compelled to make a, a decision on it tonight, great. But if not, um, we can go to next week without causing trouble. Okay. So the interior design conversation is a, let's call it a preliminary conversation. What, what you need from us tonight is to ask whatever questions we have to get whatever clarification or whatever new information we have. If we're able to make a decision, we'll make a decision, but otherwise next time. Right. Okay. And then one last, one final thing is um, there's been an, expressed an interest in um, professional interior renderings for a variety of uses um, for the, for the purposes of the project. Um, each of them will be um, in a, in excess of the design team's base contract. So we have, so we'd want to be judicious about where or how many are, are selected. But um, again, that's more for, you know, it need, doesn't need to be decided tonight, but right. between tonight and next week, deciding where you might want views and how many you want. Um, and so that would be something else to decide. And so maybe we talk about that at the very end. Okay, thank you, Kirk. So now I would turn things over to the design team. Thanks, Craig. Hi, everybody. Hey, how Ellen, how are you? I'm good, how are you guys? Nice to see you. Yes, happy to be here. Josephine, I'll let you kick it off. Josephine's the woman sure. with a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Craig outlined the plan pretty well, but thank yes. you everyone. Um, so um, we're introducing you tonight to our um, interiors groups, to Fira Associates. Um, we have Leanne and Amanda with us, and they're going to be sharing their screen and running through this interiors presentation. Um, so I hand it off to Leanne and Amanda. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Happy to join you. I know it's been a um, process, and we're really happy that we're here and able to work with all of you. Um, hopefully make your library come to reality. Um, so um, as Josephine said, we are a group of interior designers. We've worked had a relationship with um, Alexander for gosh, 25, 30 years. So we're very used to working together. Um, and this group has worked together as well in past projects. Um, so we'll be um, joining the team um, to help with the interior architectural finishes design and selection, um, as well as the furniture, which we'll get to at a, at a later date. 
But tonight our focus is on um, presenting some preliminary uh, palettes and ideas for uh, what we see collectively as um, good work in your library. So if I could share my screen. And we've met with Amanda and Leanne a couple of times already. Uh, they have worked on a, most of the libraries we've worked on. So we yes. feel as though they're the right fit for us. Yes. Um, so introductions, we always said I'm Leanne Vilecki, I'll be the principal mm -hmm. in charge. Amanda Bailey is the interior designer of the project. Um, so as far as just, just to kind of just quickly go through the over process overview. Um, this We're is not seeing your screen. Oh, you're unless not? Unless I'm not. Can everybody see the screen? So did nope. I do? No. Nope. Hold on one sec, sorry. How's that? I think it's loading. Okay. Here we go. You see that? Okay, great. Um, so introductions, here we are. So process overview, this is the first of um, three design meetings. Uh, that will um, happen during the um, design development and construction document phase. Um, so for this first meeting, we're talking about concepts, kind of big picture, how we see materiality in the building. Um, the next meeting we will propose, you know, presenting actual materials. Hopefully that will be something we can um, do in person, we can help. Um, and just a reminder for this process, because it is a public project, we will be ultimately looking to, you know, select three materials for each type um, to be able to put in our documentation. So we'll get to all that with you. And then, you know, work towards our last meeting um, to get together to kind of to finalize the selections that we would then put forth for documentation. So um, this is the beginning. Um, so out of this meeting, we would like to get um, as much as we can, some direction from the committee on, you know, preferences, comments on, you know, various materials that you see, palettes and application. Um, so we come away with that. We'll have something to work with to get us to our next design meeting. So this first series of slides um, is an overview with our proposed ideas for what type of material could be in each of the spaces. So it's been color coded as a key here down on the left. Um, so as you, this is on the lower level, the idea is for this main um, building entry circulation into the public special collections area to be a porcelain tile. Uh, moving into the meeting room and some of these um, adjacent spaces that would be carpeted, carpet tile most likely. Um, there is quite a bit of area on this level that's designated for the special collections, whether it's the storage or working areas. Um, for those areas, we're looking at proposing a material that's, um, you know, low VOC, you know, appropriate for just storing materials like that. So it's, it's a composite form, textile composite flooring. Kinetics is one brand name. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that at all. Um, and then uh, what's in green are areas that uh, we're proposing to be wood. So um, you know, we're using this timber framing in the building. So we thought a nice idea would be to, you know, perhaps make, construct the stair out of wood. We'll get to more images of that later on. And then what's in gray is either, you know, concrete back of house spaces or perhaps rubber for the interior stairs. Um, and then some of the support spaces, break room, um, a linoleum flooring. So it's just kind of a more resilient type flooring. And, you know, there's some there's some variations within all of these that we can explore. And Leanne, I just want to just say that the selection of the materials is based on essentially the use of the room, right? And Correct. how, for instance, the carpet helps us with acoustics in a room and the durability would go in the high traffic areas, that kind of Correct. thing. Yeah, and also, you know, ease of maintenance, porcelain tiles, yes. you know, it's like one of the easiest materials to maintain. And this, and the, this is where your most traffic will occur in these areas. So going up a level um, and looking how the materials would map out on this floor. Um, so you come up and this is your main um, circulation. You're coming in the existing building as your entrance. Uh, a lot of this we understand is, you know, gonna stay and be, you know, cleaned up. Um, however, we are proposing that this first main entry be um, 
be uh, in porcelain tile, and that would just carry right through to your cafe area and um, display and the new books area back in here. All most of the other areas on this level would be carpet tile, um, you know, different for either the children's area, um, stack areas, and even, you know, this um, historic room. Um, all of those we see as carpeted areas. Typically under the main circulation desk, we do some type of resilient flooring, whether it's a sports floor or something that has some cushion to it, um, just to help with the, um, the use of that space. And I probably literally in the new book sorting area. So what's shown here is wood, is this is your main stair, really just a refinish of the existing. Uh, craft room would be a linoleum product. And then we move up a level where we're getting a little bit more. Um, generally, this whole upper level is mostly stacks, study spaces. Um, and then as we transition to the historic building, what we're proposing is keeping your wood floor and uh, refinishing, cleaning it up, you know, perhaps as we go through maybe this area rugs or other things to soften it. And then getting up to the upper level, um, again, wood floor areas, bathrooms would be ceramic tile. A porcelain tile. So, so bef before you go any further, I just want to ask for questions about these, uh, what we've seen about flooring. Sure. Sharon? Sharon? Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. So I, I, I do have a couple of, a couple of questions. Um, if starting on the second floor or going back down to the second floor. So you mentioned um, you left in wood, the the adult reading rooms in the front. Can you go to the second floor? Oh yeah, second floor. Sorry, yes, here. That's okay. Yeah, um, which I love. That's great. But there's more. Uh, there's more original 1928 uh, hardwood there, both to the left and to the right of that mm -hmm. green space. Um, and mm -hmm. I didn't know if if that should also be wood with area rugs, or are you suggesting carpet? Uh, for noise factor? Perhaps. These are office spaces, correct? Correct. Um, yeah. So I will probably in an office space, you may want to carpet that acoustic wise. And, um, you know, you probably have a task chair rolling around on it, right? Um, yep. A little more difficult to do an area type, area rug type situation in there. Uh, it's something we can explore, but I would think as an office space goes, it might be. Um, it may be better to make those spaces carpet. Okay. Certainly doesn't have to be the same carpet. It could be something that's, you know, a little more appropriate to the, you know, the architecture in that space. Sure, sure. Uh, go down to the first floor. Sure. Um, so where, where should I, where should I start? So I love that you put the rubber flooring underneath the adult circulation desk. Does it also make sense to put the rubber flooring underneath the kids circulation desk? Yes, probably. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. We, we, um, yeah. Can I ask? So I have the same question that we uh, we just discussed about the second floor. Uh, there's more 1928 uh, yeah. hardwood. So yeah. like the the southern part of the children's room uh, yeah. to the exactly yeah. yeah could. So I spoke with the children's room folks and they would love all hardwood it's just easier to clean you know we've got um, carpet right now and it, it gets gross pretty quickly um yeah. so that was something that they suggested but i understand the noise factor um and i also uh, i could let me stop there i will just address the children's room what do you all think okay. about about leaving that poor part wood George is going to talk. Well, we transition right here, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Leanne, what do you mean transition? Well, the old to the new, right? Well, where does it stop? Is yes, it correct. Correct. Yeah. correct. Right. Uh, okay. As you're thinking about the answer to Sharon's question, does the choice of wood versus carpet, what are the budget implications? Craig, no, I th the carpet is more uh, cost effective. The refinishing the wood floors, yeah. Right. One of the things, and Sharon, you probably know this best than anybody because you're in the thick of this with us. Some of these rooms were taking existing walls out. Oh, okay. And sometimes they build the 
walls and then put the floor in. So then you have these weird mm. gaps. Yeah. But we can look at it because sometimes they build the walls on top of the floors. So, but we can look at that for sure. Right. And my my last question, I think, has to do with so the barrel vaulted ceiling room. Uh, I'm assuming it's wood underneath. I could be wrong. And so uh, because of the double height, again, mm -hmm. I suppose it makes sense to have it carpet. But if it could be wood, I think it would be a really beautiful space. Those are all my comments. Thank you. OK, thank you. No, that's, that's great. OK, yeah, George. Yeah, we can look at that as well. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if Ellen, you know offhand. Um, I, I don't know. It, it, it could be, my guess it is wood. Maybe, maybe um, so, so just hold, 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 line, hold line a second. I'm sorry, George. George will tell us. Okay, George. Yeah, because I can. I, I I know the answer to this. Um, the the room with the vaulted ceiling that used to be the fiction room, back when that was an auditorium that had fixed seating. So if there is a floor under that carpet, the floor is probably not salvageable because it had bolted uh, auditorium chairs in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, as far as the children's space goes, there likely is hardwood under it still, but uh, having recarpeted the entranceway in the community room, which also had hardwood floors under it, we know that the floors were in very, very poor condition and partially uh, modified during the 90s renovation. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. not clear that if there is hardwood under the carpeting in the children's rooms, if it would be even salvage salvageable. Okay. Right. And George, do you have any other comments about these this, these flooring materials? For example, the, the places where the tile is uh, is shown. Um, I don't. My only my only uh, thought, and this would also be a question for the children's department, is if they would prefer some of their area to have an alternative to carpet like either cork or rubberized flooring just for easy cleanup. Uh, they do have that crafts room that's gonna be linoleum, but uh, they're likely going to be purposing a portion of the children's room for other activities. So they may want some kind of a hard surface in there somewhere, but again, that would be checking with the children's department. Thank you, George. Christine. Yeah, thanks. Um, so first off, I just have to say, I love hardwood. Hardwood floors are gorgeous. They offer like a logistics look of warmth and all that. So wherever we can put them in, great, but they're old and um, good points about walls moving and, and previous screws and holes. But looking at the children's room, just thinking back to my own kids and being in there with kids, um, kids love to just plop down on the floor and you know, look at that bottom row of books. That's what I remember. And and the truth is, rug is a little warmer and more comfortable to kneel on or um, just hang out on. It was just a thought for function. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Christine. Okay. Thoughts about the flooring, Alex? Um, I had a question on the teen, the young adult space. Um, the young adult space has an activity space like the children's does, but that's not shown in linoleum. It looks like it's carpeted. I see the teen folks are in our audience. So I don't know if I'm asking a question whether they really want it that way, but I just don't know whether or not there was desire by the teen group to have their, their activity space, something that's more easily cleanable than carpet. So other comments about the about the flooring. Uh, so what we're, what my thought is that we're going to go through this uh, uh, thing with the, the the interior finishes and then we'll take some public comment on the whole thing rather than to kind of okay. do it segment by segment. Uh, did I okay. see another hand? Did I see another hand? It was just me. I wanted to say, so these plans that Stefora has presented is not showing the new location of YA, um, yeah. but uh, okay. when it does move, I would think at the very least, the, the, the cooperative room would be linoleum. Thanks. And may I just ask, Sharon, linoleum as opposed to tile? Uh, uh, so that's where my 
I have, it's above my pay grade. I just, I mean, something hard versus okay. a carpet. Thank okay. you. Yes, right. easy to clean. Okay. So I okay. think we, we are we are ready for the next bit. Okay, thank you. Okay, so these next two slides are um, here to kind of show you the, the, the thinking of how we see the, the interiors of this space. Um, and, you know, uh, taking our cues, what we think thought was, was important. This, there's a lot of rich history in the Amherst area. I actually went to school out there, my daughter went to school out there. So I'm familiar with like the farmlands and the lakes and the mountains and the trees. And the fact that you are, have chosen this timber framing for your interiors um, really, you know, kind of led us to this feeling of nature and how do we bring that into your space. Um, and the materials that we choose and the patterns and then color. Um, so for these next two slides, we're kind of building on that feeling of nature and environment. Um, this first is, you know, uh, you know the, the porcelain tile that we could bring in could have, could have like a nice feel of like slate and stone. We're definitely, you know, working with wood in the space. The carpet patterns, you know, maybe in the general collections, children might end up being a little more fun than this, but could have kind of this textural organic feel to the, feel to it. And the opportunity to bring in, you know, these, this neutral palette, but also bring in some of these cooler tones, um, you know, that kind of remind us of the lakes and the rivers and um, what's happening in the mountains. So that's one direction. Um, again, taking the nature theme, and you know, another approach would be to kind of still use that backdrop. Maybe we, you know, maybe we lighten the porcelain tile a little bit more variegated with a little warmer tones in it. Um, you know, you pull from more of these autumnal feeling um, images of your landscape where we could bring in some warmer accents. Still have this backdrop of neutral tones with the greens and, and warm colors. Um, but, you know, again, the carpet may be a little bit lighter. Again, some organic patterns. Um, but there's, you know, there's ways to go. And maybe there's parts of the library that are one or the other. But, um, you know, it, it seems like a nice way to kind of bring in their area into your library and have a nod to the community. Um, so the next series of slides are really precedent images for, for different areas within it. So, you know, we know we have this, you know, important historic part to, to your building that we are certainly maintaining and cleaning up, um, you know, lots of use of, of wood and moldings, um, looking to this, you know, stone on the, on the exterior and how do we maybe bring that into the building a little bit, which again is, you know, connected to the nature and the stone of the area. Um, and then looking at how this building, we're going to be linking the old and the new. These two images are of um, Holyoke Library, which you yeah, may have seen or not. We actually did work on this project um, with Tangled Alexander. But this is a really successful way of, you know, linking the old historic part of the building to the, to the new construction you can kind of see there in the distance. Um, it's also evident here in one of the reading rooms where, you know, you can kind of see through to the historic part yet have you know, a little bit more of the contemporary new exterior um, space. So we're gonna be looking at ways to you know, think about how our materials and, and connect both of these spaces architecturally and with materials. Um, this next slide is kind of focusing on some concepts for how this main circulation stair in the main part of your building um, could unfold. This, we, we think it would be really interesting and nice to kind of link your structure with the stair material and we could introduce some wood here. Uh, different ways we can do that, you know, with kind of with solid block, wrapping a stair, um, providing some, you know, accent uh, here. You see like an accent on the stringer. Uh, this is representative of kind of the material you'd see in that main, um, that main circulation path that kind of brings you through the building and then how we maybe connect to the spaces that are off that, you know, one clear example is the um, circulation, the special collections rooms. Um, and then also, you know, this, this is kind of interesting, this is the new building over at Amherst College where, you know, they used a lot of natural wood, but the stark contrast with the darker floor could also be really interesting. So I think, you know, one of the things we're looking at is, is what's the right field? We want that darker contrast to the main floor, maybe, you know, something that's a little bit lighter. General stacks areas, um, you know, we have this nice wood cladding, hopefully, on our exterior, <clears throat> excuse me, 
and then kind of coming into the stacks area, you know, maybe we'll get to use a little bit of wood on the end panels, but another nice way is to, you know, lighten it up. Maybe, maybe there's a contrast to all that warmth with kind of a lighter palette on our stacks. Um, and then introducing this, certainly when we get into furniture, it'll be lots of opportunity to bring in some color with that and maybe a little bit of accent, you know, on the, on the wall surface. Special collections, um, two different types of spaces that happen here. Uh, you will have these two spaces that are directly off your um, main circulation area. And, you know, I think it's going to be like a, an interesting study on how we link those two spaces together to draw people in. Uh, is it, you know, creating either, you know, gallery type spaces um, along with display? Uh, this was an interesting image. It was kind of combining a place maybe for people to be in there a little bit longer instead of it's a little less museum, but a little bit more interactive. Talk about that. Um, in the back, you know, you'll have some area where you're going to need kind of high stacks, but we did think in the upfront areas it'd be nice to bring in the porcelain tile. This is an image of that textile composite floor. It's just one of the patterns. So, um, it's, it's an in interesting material, very durable. And then the children's room, um, you know, a place we certainly think we can have a lot of fun, um, bringing in lots of bright colors. You know, linoleum flooring could have a lot of pattern to it. It could be rubber as well. There are, you do have some wall expanses where we could look to do some, you know, great graphics. Uh, another idea was that, you know, we, there's a lot of history of um, children's book, book authors. Um, you know, of course, Emily Dickinson and ways that we can maybe bring some of that imagery into the children's library. We have organic stacks. So this is just some big picture thinking to kind of get you thinking about what the look and feel of the space could be. But this, I think we think could be a really like fun, colorful space. It's got a lot of great light with all the new windows. And it can really take it, we think, um, you know, a good punch of color in here. Okay. So, so a couple of questions. Slide. Thank you. Thanks so much. So uh, okay. Sharon, George. Yeah. Sharon. So uh, thank you so much for this presentation. It was beautiful. I had a blast, you know, looking at all of okay. all of these pictures. It's so great. And all the colors you chose are really quite lovely. Uh, my only request as the library director is not to have the dark flooring. So like your your palette concepts with the cool accents. Beautiful, yeah. but okay. I feel like the porcelain tile and the carpet uh, choices there, those colors are just so dark. I'm just afraid they're going to show everything. This um, color, yeah. Yeah, as beautiful as it is. I mean, that's really gorgeous, but um, it's going to show every speck. Um, the other thing, going to the, the staircase uh, slide, mm -hmm. I have heard that people get nervous around the stairs that don't have the risers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wanted to point that out. I think we should have risers. And one other thing that I wanted to say had to do with all of the colors in the teen and the kids room. I, I think the teens will have their own uh, things to say. And I say whatever they want, I want. But I did get a chance to talk with our children's room staff and they fell in love immediately with the picture in the lower left corner. They were actually hoping yeah. for more cooler tones. Um, and then they would liven up the place with, with the books and the children's art, that kind of thing. So thank you. Okay, right, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, George and then Christine. George. Um, yeah, I'm going to literally echo everything Sharon just said uh, about being more for the cooler colors. Um, one of the biggest issues we have with the current building is the downstairs feels like a dungeon. And mm -hmm. the more lighter and airy we can make the spaces appear, the better off we'll be. Um, and finally, I just want to um, keep reminding everyone that we have a very large collection of uh, historic artwork that much of it needs to be on public display. Uh, so we just need to remain mindful that uh, while we're choosing colors and, and decorating spaces that uh, the wall space is going to be shared with a considerable amount of artwork that will need to be placed out in public view. Okay. Thank you, George. Christine. 
I have a couple of questions and a couple of comments. Um, first, uh, if, if y'all could move to the one that showed the Holyoke Library, yeah. um, kind of that blend of old and new was a beautiful photo. Yeah, there. I just happened to notice they have a very large area rug there. And is that a possibility on hardwood floors? Because it does kind of give that sort of old era look. Um, yeah. I don't, is that an attached rug? Like how did those, that kind of concept work? Um, it, it is a possibility. That is, that is just a big area rug. It's not, um, it's not actually attached. I mean, they may have put some tape under it just to, but, <clears throat> but it can work. Yeah, and that's in a very public space, actually, yeah. Sense. I mean, you and and you you said you did that library you worked out so you really are familiar library, yeah. okay that's yeah. great yeah. um I agree with Sharon with the floating stairs they look really cool but it looks just a little scary and I wonder if things do drop at all you know or get swept and fall anyways um stacks um I think I prefer the wood stacks again more than the white ones you showed that reminded me of kind of like Ikea yeah, um but I understand in work areas, like in special collections or something like that, you would go with whatever's less expensive and functional and easy to well, clean. It, yeah, I mean, it will come to that. It may end up being, you know, we can also look at a combination of it once, you know, once we start to do That's yeah. true. That's a good I point. Actually, that would warm up the wire. Where, where there's but, some white used, you know, opposite, you know, some wood. So we can right. explain. Thank you. My last question is on the children's room. You showed that really cool. I don't know if it was the you know, linoleum with the patterns and nuts in it. And I think that is just a really great look to liven up or brighten up an area. Yeah, there it yeah. is. Is how is that brutally more expensive than carpet squares? Because I know carpet squares are really very frugal and, and functional. Um, I think linoleum linoleum versus carpet tile you mean is that what you're asking yeah 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 i think linoleum would be less expensive than carpet tile. Yeah, even the colored with the cut oh yeah the color doesn't um actually the mat with these patterns the cost would come more into the intricacy of the pattern and the installation mm -hmm. but material wise um linoleum should come less than carpet tile well depending on which one you pick but yes <laughs> yeah thank you it's more the installation i think in that but i thank just you. say one Everything's thing on the, I'm sorry, Kristen. Yeah, no, um, I just wanted to thank them. It's everything, it all looks wonderful. Thank you. To your point, Christine, just to make clear to the folks about the book stacks, right? And Craig, I'm sure is thinking money when we're talking about this. So the book stacks are the standard metal book stacks. So one of the places that we can add some uh, color or in material is to the end panels. Right. Right, so that's, uh, we are on a budget. I'm sure we have an allowance for that. So as, as Leanne said, we be, would be strategic in where we put those. So we get the biggest bang for our buck, but just overall, it will be the metal um, bookshelves. Great, thanks so much, yeah, Alex. Thank you. Um, first, I just wanna say that I really appreciate um, the focus on designs that are uh, natural and the palettes that you're looking at. Um, and uh, I guess just two comments and one uh, question. Um, so I know some things that I've heard is, especially in the children's room and teens room, you know, while we wanna have things that are fun for kids, we also want things that are gonna stand the test of time. And um, sometimes things get a little too fun and then wind up, you know, uh, feeling dated at some point. Um, and the picture that's at the top in the middle sort of reminds me, I, I don't know what decisions we've made around wayfinding um, and in terms of um, uh, uh, the design, you know, whether we're going to rely solely on signage or whether we're going to be using different floor color patterns. So we have a lot of uh, non-English language uh, native speakers uh, that come to our library and use our library. Um, we also have people who obviously uh, come to our library for literacy because we'll have a literacy project there. So I just want to be cognizant as we design things if we want to be thinking about wayfinding in, in creative ways, not just you know signage. Um, and then my last comment is um, 
I don't know. We have an incredible art program around here in terms of the high school, the college. Um, there are some really beautiful murals that have been done. And I don't know the extent to which we want to take advantage of the community in terms of having certain, uh, we have a ton of children's book illustrators, authors here in town, as well as again, the high school. So if that's something we want to consider, what's the timing and how do we incorporate that in if that's a possibility? Thanks. Thank you, Alex. Um, I wanted to ask you a question again. Thank you so much for this. It's really exciting. It's really an exciting yeah. moment to see all this. So my question, and this is as much for Sharon and George, my question has to do with um, the compatibility of uh, color palettes uh, with the historic nature of parts of the building. So, I mean, we you could make the children's room like look like it's the greatest modern children's room in the history of children's rooms. Uh, but that's a historic part of the library. And I just wonder what we all ought to be thinking about the kind of function of the room and what the room is going to do. How does that play out in terms of also making it work with the location of the library? Now, uh, what I'm about to say may contradict what I just said. But um, as much as I love uh, the um, Holyoke Library, and I don't have a, the clearest recollection of it, having visited it once, I had the sense of a kind of radical separation between the old building and the new part of the building. Uh, and there were a couple of features that tied them together, like the the outside of one of the historic, you know, the inside one of the historic walls. And again, I just wondering in terms of your thinking about the colors and the palettes, whether you are want to be attentive to making sure that there's some real continuity between the historic part of the building and the new part of the building in terms of people's experience. Hmm. Well, it's, um, let's see. I mean, I, I think, you know, they are going to have a clearly, you know, a stark difference to them because you have this historic part. They were, you know, keeping a lot of it intact. Yep. The doors and all of that, the, the wood the materials. Um, I think it's significant that you're keeping that as your main entrance to the library yep. as well, right? I think that certainly shows that you want people to still, you know, feel all of that as they as they walk through. And then you, you know, you mentioned you're going to have the use of historic artwork throughout the building. But I also think like the use of, you know, the framing of the interior is all going to be, you know, it's a little bit more contemporary in a way, I guess. You know, um, the lighter wood tones in the structure of the space is different. Um, so I, uh, um, I, I can maybe okay. help. Yeah. So Austin, and we don't have this graphic to show you, but we can bring yep. it next time. And, and Sharon and Craig are familiar with it. So, and this is part of our study for the historic tax credits exercise we're doing is Great. in the, in, in the rooms that are historic, originally historic, right? The original yeah. building, we are keeping all the existing window trim, all the, you know, baseboard trim, the chair rolls, we're keeping all that existing fabric. Yep. So you're going to have that. But so to your question is, are you asking is how then do we treat the new stuff going in the carpet and maybe the furniture in there? So, yeah, what I'm, what I was, um, I'm trying to imagine this bright, modern, you know, many colors, kind of very exciting children's room with the surround of the historic building. So that's kind of what I'm trying to okay. think about. And whether when you yeah. choose interior finishes and designs, whether you're just, I, I know I'm going to use the word just, but I don't mean just, whether you're just kind of thinking of the function of the room. This is a children's room. It ought to be done in neon. It ought to be, you know, whatever. Uh, versus you're thinking about the function of the room and its location in relationship to the historic part of the building. 
So that's what I was just trying to think out loud about for myself. George? Um, I will say that as far as the children's room goes, uh, the historic part that has all of that incredible work, work and the archways and everything right now is being reserved mostly for stacks. So I wouldn't envision that the brightly colored floor patterns and all that would be happening in that space. But um, at least that's what it seems to me. I mean, once you go beyond the stacks area, you're getting into new construction. New so construction, I, think yeah. that, I think that that portion of the children's room with the fireplace and the, and the arched ways, um, I think it'll be yeah. less affected by by the the bold designs of the rest of the children's room. Sharon? Austin, I just want to ask, are you are you asking, do you prefer that the entire library in essence be kind of classic? Uh, so I wasn't expressing a preference uh, about this. I was just asking as the architects and the interior designers think about the building, how do they blend or think about this is children's room, we want to make it bright and fun. Um, but it's a children's room, part of which is located in this historic part of the building and has historic detail, which I hope we're going to keep. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I was just trying to put on the table and get okay. as a, some conversation about it. Um, and then my other question, Ellen, um, again, it's, 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 you know, it's, it, it's a kind of matter of taste. I mean, I understand that the new part of the building is a new part of the building. And from an architectural point of view, you may want to have a kind of pretty clear, you know, you're in the new part of the building, you're in the new part of the building. Uh, I just noticed when I was in Holyoke, this, my own sense was a kind of, it was very stark. You know, you went from parts of the building where there was wood and soft pallets to other parts of the building where there was just no no kind of hint of it. And I'm not talking about the wood now. I'm talking about the colors and the carpeting and, and the mm -hmm. like. It was again, it was that was the design idea. You you okay. you you pass. You get you, you we did a good job if that's what <laughs> thank you, you. Yeah, that's what I we tried to do. <laughs> yeah. I, if I may weigh in for a second here, Austin. Um yes, I think your really key question, which is at the heart of what we as designers do, because as architects and as interior designers, we're always trying to balance the issue, especially when you have a historic building like you do yeah. with contemporary. And in many cases, uh, even historic commissions actually want to recognize that there's a distinction between the uh -huh. old and the new. They do not want okay. to try to emulate because they say, you need to make it very obvious that this part is new okay. and this part is old. The, the, the real trick here, here lies in how successful do we do that? And you're absolutely right, it's up subject to taste. But a lot of things I think Leanne is hitting on is the threading of materials, the palette, and this idea of if, if people are, for example, leaning towards the cool, you know, for, for lack of a better word. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that, that's the thread that ties a lot of this together. So it feels like it's all of a piece, but it's more complementary versus mimicry. So it, it's it's a very it's a very fine line, and we're all constantly threading this all the time. And and we really appreciate that question because it is right at the heart of everything we do. Yeah. Okay, well. I'll keep asking it. Okay. All right. So I think uh, I think I see Alex. Alex. Thanks. Um, I have one more question. This may not be the right time, but these pictures in front of me are reminding me. So, um, in the children's <laughs> area, we got a lot of feedback from the community, and I don't know how the children's librarians feel about it. So you'll let them weigh in. But we got a lot of feedback from the community. These sort of nook areas that are in these pictures on the right hand side was definitely a big hit um, in terms of having nook spaces like those um, in the children's area. So I don't know if that's possible, doable, or if the librarians even want it, but I just want to remind people that the community was very much in favor of it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, any other, uh, any other questions, suggestions, and, uh, um, Ellen and Leanne, I want to make sure that you're getting from us what you want from us. So if you want something else from us, uh, what what is it that you would want or have you gotten what you need so far? Well, um, I'll tell you what we 
heard, I think, correct me wrong, I think, you know, because we're going to go away now and, and develop some real palettes to present to you and real materials. Right. Um, so it, it sounds as if the preference is for, you know, lighter values on the floor, not so dark. Um, I didn't know if this was in the range. We do think it's, you know, this particular one kind of felt a little bit like it took its nods from the exterior a little bit. Um, yeah. Short of getting too light, or do you really see this as, you know, a really light floor like you see here? Um, it is a big space, so I think we need a little bit of depth to keep it grounded. But I mean, we can present options to you as well when we come back. But um, but that's kind of what we heard. And then um, uh, hold, hold on before you go. So okay. I just want to I, before you move, um, yep. I just want to make sure that we're all now comfortable with this direction. Okay, uh, Christine. Sorry, Christine. So I just want to confirm we're going with the warm, not the cool. I'm, I'm just. No, I, I was looking more into this tub, but I, but I, we we did hear that the cooler accents are That's probably preferred. But, so you know. cooler but lighter on the floors, maybe is. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Christine. And then. Um, This we'll work on the stair. Um, and I think I don't know if you had any. This might be a little premature. I know we have to have a little bit more discussions about what actually happens in some of the special collection spaces. Yeah. But um, I don't know if you have any initial thoughts on you know how you envision these spaces and if you know having a tile floor is appropriate or would you want to see wood in there again or is it you know soft flooring? Great, Sharon. Yeah, um, Austin, I would love it if, so our um, our curator is in the audience and I was wondering if you could let her speak to this. Uh, I'm gonna let everybody speak to everything in a, in, a, in a minute, but I wanna make sure that there are any other questions that you have for the committee and then we'll have everybody speak and then the committee will speak again. Okay. okay. Uh, so, what I'd like to do is to invite members of the public who wish to speak. There are 10 attendees about these uh, kind of interior design elements that we have seen so far, if you would signify by raising your hand. So the first one I see is Chris Riddle. Can we bring Chris into the room? There he is. Chris. Chris is muted. Chris, did you want to speak? Um, thank you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see. I want to speak to the the question of the of the color palette in the children's area, in uh, in contrast to the historic uh, uh, treatment of the interior walls and Great. in the existing building. Uh, I'm, my, I'm a, 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 a grandparent that has spent a lot of time in the children's area and, uh, and it's, the kids have enjoyed it. They've been, they, they, have, they like it, but it, it is stodgy in there. And I think, it's, I, I think I would encourage us to try to bring in some of this uh, childlike spirit even into the portions of it that are covered in mahogany and, and woodwork and wood in general. It can be done. You can do that if you do it carefully. I think you can combine um, uh, uh, primary colors and, uh, and, and stodgy surroundings. Uh, <laughs> I, I, would, I, would, I, I think that it, it can be very nice. I think it can be done. And so okay. I would suggest that you go in that direction. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Okay, I see Bob Pam. Bob? Okay, Bob. Bob, you're muted. Right now. There you go. Okay, just uh, one quick comment about the children's room. Um, I spent uh, 
number of years in a small library in Connecticut. And in one corner of the room, the children's room, they had built a uh, small raised, what looked like a, uh, the effect of, was of a tent. So that if somebody in the children's staff wanted to read a story to kids, they could sit around in front of it and the uh, speaker would be raised a bit. But mostly what would happen is that the kids would sit within this little room uh, and you know it gives them the, the same effect that the uh, cubicles in the uh, room that you see at the upper right corner now of your screen uh, yeah. of little spaces that, that are private but not private. Um, and it worked. I have a picture of that which I think I have uh, shown in the past to uh, to folks at the library, but I will send that to you again. Thank you, Bob. Okay, any other member of the public wish to contribute to this part of the conversation? Catherine. Oh, da, 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 da. Oops, hang on a second. Okay, we can hear you. Catherine, you're now muted. Okay, I think there I'm unmuted go. now. Thank okay. you. Okay, <laughs> text was, took me a minute there, I'm on the phone, so. Um, yes, I am in special collections and I think I can hopefully speak to a little bit of um, the design there. Great. I did, I did also want to mention to our uh, design crew there that the special collections reading room is actually a public space. I don't know if that really um, uh, makes a difference to their overall design, but I did notice that they had the same flooring as in our storage space and our workroom, which are private spaces. Um, okay. And the other, another thing I did want to mention is that in the special collections reading room, we will be bringing a most, if um, probably most, if not all of our tables and chairs and things that we currently have, and they are all wood, primarily darker wood. Um, so I don't know if that will just another thing to think about as you think of colors for our area. <laughs> don't know if okay. you have any other questions, but yeah. Okay. Thanks. So anything else you want to know about special collections? Um, well, I know we're going to have like a separate discussion about it. So I don't want to take up everyone's time, but just, you right. know, if, if any of these images are even sparking, you know, anything that you would like to see happen in the more public spaces, um, just your thoughts on those, or is it completely off the mark or, you know, just any thoughts you have just initially on materiality? And, well, know. I can actually, yeah, I could actually tell you that on the bottom right image there, yeah. Yeah. Um, those two display cases look very similar to the ones that we actually currently have and will be moving with us. We just have different okay. legs. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't see anyone else wishing at this point to speak to this part of the presentation. So I'm going to come back to the uh, committee. Uh, and I'm going to come back to again, Ellen and Leanne. Alex? Yeah, thanks. I just have one more comment. I'm assuming that um, the designers have seen, uh, or maybe it's a poor assumption, the Civil War tablets and what they look like to have a sense of, you know, how they, how you might want to be dealing with that room. We do have... Yes. Okay. And we do have someone who... Uh, we are working with, and so we can certainly send them over this and see what, if any comments they have as well, but just want and to sure. Alex, what is that person, should we talk to that person? Would you think it would be beneficial to us? Yeah, Sharon, you, I'll let Sharon type okay. in. Okay. 
Yeah, I definitely, I think, I feel like this needs to be figured out. Sean, you're still here, right? Sean Mangano. Um, because so here we are providing the space, but the, uh, the design of whatever's going on the inside is that's going to be funded kind of separately. And um, there's a town councilor, Aniga Lopes, who is uh, in charge of uh, overseeing how this space will look, but I'm not sure how the funding of all of those pieces will happen. Anyway, I, that, that's an important piece. And as far as meeting with uh, these two people, yes, I think it's uh, it's worthwhile. We have a call into this person and when I get a chance to speak with them, I'll arrange something with you guys. Thank you, Sharon. Okay. Thank you. Sean, did you want to say anything in response to what Sharon just said? Not right now, but I think Sharon, okay. maybe you and I should connect about what types of costs um, you're, you know, you're, you guys are currently thinking about so we can start planning for that or we can continue to plan for that. Thank you, Sean. Okay, again, back to the committee. Anything else that you want to say about what we have seen so far? And then back to Ellen and Leanne, do you have what you need from us at this point? I think we're good, Ellen. No, I, yeah, if you're all set, we're all set. Yeah. So I'm gonna say again, uh, how grateful we are for the thoughtfulness of, the, uh, of, of this proposal. And I will say for myself, I, I particularly love the idea that you remember that it's low this library is located in a place with rivers and mountains and right. uh, authors and uh, all kinds of wonderful things and seeing that you thought about that is incredibly impressive and we're really grateful um that you um that 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 you did that and we're really grateful that you didn't think about our town uh, in the 300 days when it's simply gray and cloudy here. So it was really <laughs> great, great, grateful for that. Okay. It so is the valley, I know. Okay. It, is the, it is a beautiful place to live. Yeah. So I think we're all, I think we're all set, Leon, on your part, okay. Craig, Ellen. Oh, good. We're... Okay. Well, thanks, everybody. Nice to meet you. Thanks for your work. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you, Leon. Look forward to it. All right, bye. So next up will be, if the design team's ready, the uh, discussion of the young adult program relocation. Yes, so I'll share my screen if I can. And a reminder, this is something that the design team is looking for a decision on tonight. Great. Did someone en enable me to share my screen? If you want to continue, there we go. Thank you. Okay. Josephine. Okay, great. Thank you. So um, what we just want to run through with you tonight is um, sort of a development that we have been seeing as we are progressing through um, in a little bit more detail with the plans um, and our consultants. Um, we're starting to refine the spaces a little bit more and um, we are thinking that the location for the young adult might be better served in the north part of the addition, the northernmost section of the addition. And, um, and so what we're just going to run through with you here tonight is that the location of, of, this, of this switch, what that means for YA and for the, um, the space where YA was previously. And, um, and as Craig mentioned, um, if everyone is in agreement, we would like yep. um, sign off tonight on that. Okay. So um, what you see here in front of you right now is the um, plan that was proposed to you a few weeks back. Yep. Uh, shows YA here in this previous location. Um, so I'm going to flip over to the proposed plan now of the new YA location. And so I know most of you have seen this already as we've um, share this with you, but now you see YA located up here in this northern northernmost portion of the addition. 
so uh, what this does clearly is it opens up this main space again, which we all um, really um, loved from that original rendering that we mm -hmm. um, shared with you folks back a couple years ago. And, um, and so it opens it back up, which is a great opportunity um, for the space again. Um, but with our um, structural layout, we're finding that having some of these um, dividing walls that YA really needs is working with um, the structural layout as well. Um, so it's sort of um, helping out in a couple different um, ways. Um, with the new YA collection here, what we did was <coughs> um, kept some of the stacks outside, just as we had previously kept some of the stacks outside of the entry area for the YA area. And then um, I'll zoom in here. I'm not sure if everybody can see this. Oops, sorry. Um, we can see it, Josephine. We can see your you cursor, see? the orange okay. dot. Yes. Okay. Yep. You can see the spaces, the rooms, the yes. rooms tags. OK, great. So um, so you can see here how we laid it out, where we have the um, the group study and the YA office sort of flanking the digital media area. And the idea is that all of these walls would mainly be glass. So there's great sight lines. Um, so what else this does is introduces more staff presence in this area, which I know was a concern previously as well. Um, and, um, and then we have the um, larger YA program room um, flanking the back section here. So um, I guess I'll just stop there and see if there's any questions as far as the YA program and um, maybe start to get some initial reactions. And Ellen, Tony, feel free to chime in too if there's any YA area that I missed. Well, May I ask I speak to something. Well, go ahead, Ellen. No, I was just, for us architecturally, the biggest benefit is to get us back to where we were mm -hmm. in that main space. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think we we're all a little disappointed what putting the YA there did. Now, my recollection, this is the question, when you had the YA space where, where it was in the previous rendering, didn't you plan to have bathrooms kind of right next to the young adult space in that, uh, in that place? We had shifted them to this location here. Oh, uh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that's fine. And then my other question, go back to the other um, Part my, my other question is, and again, I'm just now not remembering. Did the flooring plan that uh, we saw it didn't anticipate this? Is that right, Sharon? It did not. Okay. Yeah, correct. Okay. All right. Uh, I got Christine, and then I think um, Alex. Christine. Yeah. So first off, what Aston was saying was it. I don't remember if it was two or three bathrooms, but are those the only, yeah, the only two bathrooms, those ones next to the teen area now, are those? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and glass wise, if you come out of those bathrooms to the right where you look, I'm sorry, it's, could you zoom in a little bit, Josephine? Oh, sure. It's really hard to see. Thanks. Um, so if you like came out of those bathrooms and you look to the right, is that glass that looking into the program room there? Currently we're showing it as glass. Okay. And is there glass above that, the door entering into that room? If you go north, yeah. Oh, right here. So is that a solid wall and it would be a glass door or why isn't there glass there? Just wondering, it's Oops, teams. Sorry. Um, yes, so I think it's just because um, of the oh, lines I can being see next now. to each other that they're showing as solid, um, but we are showing all glass here. Okay, great. And I was wondering, would it be beneficial at all to have a little bit of glass in part of the wall of the YA uh, office there, looking out into the hall towards those bathrooms in the back stairwell? I'm just thinking about, you know, teens or whatever, um, and visibility and sight lines. And um, my last comment is when I looked at the amount of square footage for the uh, YA collection between the two plans, one of the only things I noticed is it was a decrease in shelving um, by like at least 150 square feet in that area where you have it now compared to, so would books go somewhere else? I don't know. Um, 
you know, Sharon might be able to talk about like the collection size or whatever. I don't know. Sharon. I think that in the previous location, I think there was more space for the collection there than was. we needed. Um, but I would mm -hmm. need, I didn't, I didn't uh, catch that. So I would need Josephine to double check. I think now it says 425. I believe it was like mm, 560 or 570 or something before. So just. You can certainly check the, the numbers Thanks. and see where we are with the collections. Thank you. I'm guessing that it's it's probably pretty close. Um, the square footage does, isn't always telling of the collections themselves, um, but we can definitely circle back. Right, and we want to make sure, Sharon, that whatever it is that's being done here is both adequate now and has enough, you know, going forward. Um, Alex. So uh, before I say what I was going to say, Josephine, am I accurate when I'm looking at the stacks and they have numbers on them like five, three, and seven? That that speaks to the height of the stack. Yes. Okay, so what changed, uh, Christine, is in the old design, they were all fives, and across the north wall, you now have four sevens. So my guess is that we increased stack height to make up the difference in square footage would be my guess, because we now have four taller stacks than we did in the old drawing. What I was looking at before was they actually give you the square footage of the shelving. I actually, yeah. Yeah. so the total was higher yes. before. Okay. Yep, totally understood the question. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. the lack in square footage was made up by, it looks like higher stacks. Um, so I just wanted to say uh, thank you very much to FAA. Um, so when I was looking at this design, I looked back at um, the email that the head of young adult services put together saying what all of their needs were. And this hits on everything that they asked for or nearly everything that they asked for. So. Um, I, I just want to, I don't want to speak on behalf of a young adult, but I mean, thank you. It looks, it looks like everything they asked for is there. And the other thing, um, Christine, just so you know that right next to the collection. So there's the YA entry. So that's actually the fully staffed desk where you have somebody, the office is an actual office space where that won't always be staffed. So that's the sight lines tend to be from that YA where it says YA entry, because that's an actual desk. So thank you. So I, I have a question about the young adult space. I've kind of, um, I've kind of tried to follow its movements. So it's, uh, it's, um, is, is this it now? <laughs> It did travel quite a way, didn't it, Austin? It's gone. It's come a long way, and uh, you know, at, at every step of the way, there was very good reason for where it was placed. And I've understood some of the movement, uh, you know, driven by program elements. Um, and this this latter movement, I don't know what it's driven by. I mean, is it driven by the fact that we all looked at where the young adult space was in the prior iteration and said, oh, I'm going to come up the wall yes. stairs and just stare into the space? Yes. Yeah, that was that was definitely um, mm -hmm. the drive, a driving factor. And then okay. I think um, just one other thing is just looking at with our structural consultants looking yeah, at their that's layout. Great. So it's, the, it's those two things, I think, really, that, um, that really uh, made us go this direction. And are you pretty sure that this is it for the young adult space? <laughs> I think Ellen, I'll let you yes, respond. I would say we're sh we're sure I, we wouldn't have brought this up, Austin, if we didn't think it was a great move. And you know, our mission is to give you guys the best library we can give you, and we think no, this, we would, is, this helps. Yeah, yeah. But every move you make is driven by giving us the best thing, and you've put the, the best thing in three different places. So. <laughs> Saying it's the best thing is it doesn't doesn't um no you know. we think it won't move again unless Sharon <laughs> tells us to. So okay. I was I was just gonna say in their defense, uh all of the moves, it, a lot of the moves has been because staff have requested yeah, it. Sure, that's fine. That's fine. No, it, 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 no, no need to defend. This is great. Everything is everything's great. Christine. Um so another comparison that I had from the previous to uh, this one, which I assume is all um, built on programming numbers and forecasting. I do notice this 
um, conference room is much smaller than what it previously was to the point where if you put your actual like 3D head into this, um, the chairs are very close to the wall. It's not a walk around room. It's really tight. And this thing. I just wanted to put that out there functionally. I thought it was kind of small. And I did ask um, my young adult kids what they thought of this. They were wondering why the two video screens are next to each other and you have all the chairs in front. And they were kind of saying that you kind of want the two different screens. So you might have two different things going and it's just confusing to have them right next to each other. That was their comment. And they also questioned the desks with the computers above because um, they said that they wouldn't really want to be facing people as much. And most people have, all kids have their own Chromebooks or laptops and wouldn't actually be using computers um, and maybe two different tables or so. I don't know. So th they just, they were, um, they weren't sure that they would want to sit at those. Um, and uh, I just want to ask a question of booths. There's a lot of booths and how that comes about is that's the chosen desired space that kids want to um, go in. Because the problem my kid said is like at UMass in the dining commons, the problem with the booths is like one kid plunks in there and then nobody else will sit there very often. So there's not much flexibility. That's it, thanks. So I don't think we can assume that every kid has their, their own Chromebook. They, I mean, whatever, do. whatever is we do. do. They, they're given one for free through the school system. Okay. Um, the other question I have is, um, what is it that you're asking for us now? Are you asking location? Are you asking dimensions? What What is the sign off that you need? We would like approval of the new location for YA. Okay. Um, okay. We understand that little things can shift here and there Great. Um, within the space. Great. So uh, I just want to see whether we can focus on that question. Um, are we ready to say YA at the north end of the building as shown in this diagram? Christine? Could we just briefly look at what it was before? Sure. To sort of look at conference room and layout and extra space? Sure function room there you go like you said austin it keeps changing so yep so i just want that just looked roomier in some ways where yet the function room is much smaller in this than yep. the new one so yep. how does is this part of programming because if the staff is asking for this i mean there must be a reason why they feel it'll function better in the the proposed space well, can yeah. I just, Josephine, you can chime in, sorry, Austin, is that, so the program numbers that we have, and we don't have, I don't have them in front of me, um, say, for the, say for instance, that conference room was required to be 200 feet, but this, that, this layout allowed it to be bigger because that's the space we had, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you go to the new proposed one is that we're hitting the program Mm -hmm. And what just because of the layout, the, the um, multi-purpose room gets bigger. So there's, it's all within the same program, and it just gets shifted around. But uh, and Josephine, you would know better than I. We are hitting the program minimums that were requested. Right, we're hitting the programs that were were, were requested. Um, I think we did have a little bit more room to play with here, and I do believe some mm -hmm. of these numbers actually are larger than what was requested right. in the program. Okay, Sharon. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, so to put, put minds at ease, our, our children, our teen librarian, uh, Cecilia, did approve this. In fact, she had a, a big hand in designing the layout of this. Uh, so she does want, and, and she works, she has a teen advisory board that she works with. So she right. does want the booths. She, um, the, the beauty of the way this is laid out is that you've got a a, a desk in the upper uh, corner for, I don't know what it says, um, but a person can sit there at a desk and Cecilia can be in her office. So you've got oversight out of, of that mm -hmm. entire room mm -hmm. by two different people. Um, and the computers, it, it is true, not everybody has a computer um, and we need oversight over those computers. So that's why they're uh, laid out that way. We wanna see what they're looking at on those screens. Not that we're staring at them, monitoring them, but just in case. All right. 
So are we ready to give our approval to the relocation of the young adult? If anybody has an objection to it, please speak. Otherwise, we'll just assume we are all in agreement. Christine. So just wondering, um, I know it's an architectural, there's a flush wall, but could the wall move a little bit for the um, conference room to have a little bit more space in it since it is just a really wide walkway there. Um, when you say conference room, Christine? The yeah. other one on the other you side here. Study? Yeah, that's not the one. office, the actual that's conference the study? Room. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not sure. Um, about the corridor dimension, just because we don't necessarily want to make it feel too. I'm sorry. I mean the northern fish. wall. I guess it's the north, the upper oh, wall. Just staying within the um, YA area. We, I'm sure we could. Yeah, I'm sure we could do that. Give them a little bit more area in this. So we're going to get a chance to look at this all again. Is that right? Yeah. What you yeah, want and, from us? Know, we are going to be meeting with Sharon with yep. your groups as well to have, you know, workshop yep. sessions with all of your staff. So, yes. So, uh, other, other questions or thoughts about this particular space. So, on the basis of what I've heard, I've heard no objections to this. So, I think the committee is signing off on this. Austin, on this can I change. ask? Can I ask that we do a roll call vote just for the minutes on this one? Would that be okay? So Angie, do you, uh, again, I'll do whatever it is that you suggest. When we make, when we approve changes like this, uh, is it your preference that we actually do a roll call vote? I, I think it makes it cleaner for the minutes in order to okay. track the flow to of the project. Totally fabulous. Thank you, thank for you. The, thank you for the suggestion. Before we vote, I think I see a hand up. Bob Pam. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Just uh, a question because what I am looking at is that the entrance to the YA is down a not very long hall, but a, but that's the single entrance into it, um, and the the going the other way, going to the right, um, it's again a long hall up to the bathrooms and each of those first for, for the YA, I don't know that they there ought to be uh, two exits in, in order to allow um, fire egress. Um, but on the other side, there will be long periods of time while school is in, in session uh, when it'll be a long walk with nobody there as, as someone goes to the bathroom. And I just thinking about those two points. Thank you, Bob. Uh, do either have anything to say about the, the entrance points, the question that Bob raised? Um, I think I can speak to the, to the entrance Great. of the YA. Um, yep. Sharon might want to um, correct me, but um, it, I, do believe that it was um, directed by staff that they wanted the entrance at that point. We actually were showing it somewhere else and um, and that was requested to be in that location. And please, Sharon, if, I, if I'm incorrect. No, no, that's great. Yeah, no, the teen librarian suggested that, that the entrance go through the stacks so that the teenagers actually have to walk through the stack area in order to get into the, the teen space. So that's why it is where it is. And I don't oh. think it's very far, right? Can you tell me how many feet you're talking about? Josephine? Um, can't tell you an exact dimension, but it's probably it's about, about 20, feet. 20 feet. Yeah, it's six stacks, three, three, three wide. 20 yeah. Feet. yeah. Okay. It is a kind of does, I'm glad Bob raised the question. It does have a kind of odd quality to it, doesn't it? You kind of walk 20 feet to go find the door, but. Um, and we can work on that as Josephine's saying, sure. this is just the general, yep. this is where it is. Yep. And we'll, there'll be a, a fair amount of massaging. Okay, just don't move it again, Christine. <laughs> yeah, 
we'll need good wayfaring. But um, just an interesting point that Mr. Pam brought up, um, how it is a fairly large area and when you're way into the program room, how does fire code work with that? Because normally there would have to be a second exit, wouldn't there? Depending on, especially how many people are gathered in a room kind of thing. It depends on the distance. Christine, we'll double check that. Mm -hmm. Great. So I'm now gonna ask us to vote on the location of the young adult room. Um, yes indicates that you approve. Uh, no indicates that you do not. And this is the, you know, based on what we're seeing in front of us right now. George. Yes. Thank you. Um, Christine, do you have a question before we vote? I, I do have a question as a town committee. I'm just, is this a straw poll that we'll be doing from now on? Or are we actually making a motion and someone seconds it and then we approve it? I was just wondering. So I am, I, I'm, I am moving and seconding that this is where the teen room <laughs> the young adult room B. Would anybody like to second my second? Second. Thank you so much. Okay, let's start again. George? Yes. Thank you, Christine. I, I'm sorry. So then then you ask if there's any more questions or at that point, and then you, if there is none or if there is some, then you do the vote. Sorry, it's just for a town committee and I know Angie's trying to follow how it, procedure. I believe I followed proper procedure. So, but if I'm but if I'm wrong, Angie, tell me that I'm wrong. No, I, I think you've offered plenty of opportunities for discussion. Monty. So, is it okay with you, Angie, if we proceed this way? I, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Christine. I just wanted to know if it was a motion or a straffle. So, thank you. Okay, so again, I appreciate your intervention. It is a motion. And the motion has been made and I believe seconded. Uh, let's vote, George. Yes. I think you're carrying a lot of weight. That's three votes so far, George. Christine. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Sharon. Yes. Uh, Sean. Yes. Thank you, Alex. Yes. Thank you. Austin votes yes. And again, great thanks for this. Craig, what is next? Thank you, Austin. So next topic is, are the, um, the design team will be presenting the gender inclusive toilet, the, the um, great. latest design based on comments from last week. Um, right. So hold on one second. I want to make sure that um, uh, before we do this, Alex, yeah, I just wanted to ask one quick question while we have the design team here, and this may or may not be the appropriate time, but um, right. so the the team space, fabulous, totally what the team coordinator asked for. Um, in other parts of the um, schematics, and I'm looking specifically at the ESL, you know, we have a list similarly created by the head of that department, and I don't see that same level of detail and my assumption, and I don't want to make an assumption, is that as we get through design development, those elements that have been requested will be incorporated. So I just want to make sure that my assumption is correct. So uh, will, so, go ahead, Josephine. Um, so we will be going through um, more um, detailed meetings with um, staff um, as we move forward. So if there is any, you know, missing items, we can definitely touch upon them at that point. Okay. Are you said, Alex? Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Because there's definitely some requests for glass and things that I'm not yeah. seeing. So yeah, that's fabulous. Thank you. Okay. Christine. So the areas that we just flip-flopped. So now we have this the beautiful, and I can envision the CLT above it. Um, and there's a lot of stacks, but there's a big space and I think there's some window seats, but is this still being developed, Josephine, and there'll be potentially tables or chairs in between all those stacks or? or yeah. Like, is that... Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Thanks, Christine. Okay, so uh, now to the restroom layout. Yes, I think we're a bit out of sequence here. So just give me a second to sure. get to those.
Um, Tony, were you going to jump in on this one? Sure, I can do that. So this this scheme that we're presenting to you today or tonight is a response to what we heard last week. And what we've developed here is, a, is an option that really modifies B with some accommodations from C. So the key thing about this, and if just me, you want to pull your mouse through it, is that we relocated the entrance to it coming opposite the main public corridor adjacent to the stairs and elevator. And by coming in this way, uh, you can see here we've rejiggered the layout. So we still have eight uh, stalls, but we've introduced a larger family stall in the lower left hand corner. Yeah. Which previously was where the janitor's closet extended and storage, excuse me, storage extended. So that is its own thing, which is able to be, uh, you know, have its own private door. It's its own contained sink, um, toilet, of course, and dressing and changing area. And uh, <clears throat> that results in, in creating that kind of in some ways a family stall within this whole bathroom and the sinks have been self-relocated and as a result of this we've also made some adjustment in wall location so from a privacy standpoint we're now not seeing into sink areas mirrors all those concerns that were previously sprayed mm -hmm. while still retaining openness of entrance into this um, gender neutral bathroom so that's the primary difference and it retains the janitor's clause in the lower right So I just want to ask a question, which I'm, I'm, I'm sure was decided the last meeting. But uh, we there was some conversation about there was uh, in one of the designs uh, there was a, a an individual gender inclusive bathroom, and that seems to have been uh, gone. Right? Is that correct? Are you referring to this Austin, the space? It was its own um, dedicated one in the upper right corner where Josephine was circling there. Yeah. Which has now been um, removed and replaced with storage for the gallery. Okay. And I, th I think we were calling that one, Josephine, the family bathroom where we had the gallery storage. Right. That's correct. So part of the reason I asked this question is um, uh, this is the only restroom. These are the only restrooms that will be available. Uh, after hours, correct? Correct. That's correct. If I, if I, uh, if there were people that did not want to use this gender inclusive restroom, this is a question I think was asked before. After hours, they, this is it. Correct. Okay. This yep. All right. Thanks so much. Bucks. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to share that um, Walter Lloyd, who's on our Equity, Justice, and Inclusion Committee, and who made the comments um, last time about motorized wheelchairs and accessibility, um, uh, was unable to attend the meeting, but said, uh, and I'm quoting, uh, I really like option D. It's good to have other accessible stalls than just the family stall. So people in wheelchairs don't have to wait a long time if the family stall is being used. Um, I definitely think we should go with option D. Um, would it also be possible to move the janitor's closet to where the single bathroom was going to be, although that looks like gallery storage now, uh, and make a large accessible stall that isn't a family one? Um, anyway, just thought I had a possible improvement. Best, Walter. So just wanted to pass that along. Thank you, Alex. Uh, Christine? Um, I have a couple of questions. So if you, first of all, I, I just think we're, we're not really offering everyone an, a comfortable option when we take the family bathroom and put it in the very back of this one large bathroom. Um, I know when I was uh, needed the family bathroom with my kids and you have a double stroller and you're trying to head through all that to get to the back. And looking at the doors there, I can see that the family bathroom door and the first stall, those doors would actually potentially be hitting each other. Um, so it's a very tight corner there. So you're trying to get your double stroller in or your wheelchair in and there's someone's coming out of that stall um, and those doors are hitting. So I have concern with that. Um, as to toilets, I thought for code, um, playing with the numbers of what would be expected for people in the Woodbury room. Um, 
it was eight toilets. And now that we've moved a family bathroom into it, that's nine toilets. I don't know why it's not eight. Um, and uh, yeah, that's enough now. Thanks. Uh, so before Sean, I bring you in, did, did Josephine or Tony or Ellen want to say anything in response to either Alex's question or Christine's question? No, no. I mean, we can Good. make it eight. We can make it nine. We just kept it at we we had space for nine. We we could take one away. Okay, Sean. Um, how many changing stations will there, will there be in the bathroom? Which stalls will have changing stations? And this is you know as a dad of three girls that have had to kind of fight for changing stations and thinking the library might be a popular spot where those will be needed. I think it depends on how this layout ends up um, being, you know, um, realized as we develop it further. Right now, we're only showing one. Um, okay. Could we get two in there? Probably. I would advocate, yeah, if there's a way to get them in all the larger sized stalls, I think um, I think one would be tough, but. OK, Christine. So with that thought of getting rid of one stall, um, if on the right hand side you got rid of one of the single stalls, you could make one of those slightly larger ones even bigger. And um, again, to what Walter was saying, that would be a bigger bathroom for a wheelchair to use and you could get another family um, baby changing station. Thank you. So again, Josephine, Ellen, Tony, uh, what what is it that you want? You want us to sign off on this? Is that what you were hoping for? Yes, we I have, and yes. we and I apologize. I wasn't here last week, but that's what we want. And it, we we're at the point right now is that yeah. we have to pick one. Yep. Now, if we pick one and and that's fine, and we need to finish our design development drawings. If yep. and I don't I don't want to stifle what you guys are trying to do because I think it's a great thing to get these bathrooms to feel comfortable for everybody. So we need you to pick one so we can go ahead with. And this, as Tony said, is a combo of doing a couple of uh, tweaks to the ones folks were gravitating to last time. All right, Sean. To Christine's earlier point, is there a way that the family stall could be moved closer to the entrance to keep sort of the layout, that. but to, so you wouldn't have to walk through the entire um, bathroom if you didn't have we to? We could study that. Well, Tony, we can study that, but we've been studying these bathrooms for six months. Um, we can we can, we can can move it there or not. I mean, to come back to you guys in another week and then ask you if this one's okay, I mean, Austin asked what we wanted, so we want we want a decision, but we can we can move it there, and and, the, and then it's a done deal. So I would suggest something right now, and I saw this kind of designing on the fly here. But if you take a look at this plan, those and to follow your point, Christine, so if we take those two um, handicap stalls that are currently down in the lower right hand corner, and follow what you're suggesting, which is if we combine these and move the, both of them north, plan north, and then take those two regular stalls and move them plan south to split. That will enable that additional, in some ways, a secondary family bathroom to be relocated there in the upper right corner and large enough to accommodate a secondary sink and changing table within it, and then remove and push the two down. So we reduce the count to eight, but we have now two decent size, in effect, family stalls within this, one of which is right at the entrance um, because we're taking one of these out. So that could be a way that could accommodate in some ways the response to your question you raised. Uh, Christine, what to, as well as what this question be, that you're raising, Sean. Right, Tony, but what has to, we do have to just review again is toilet counts um, yeah. because yes. we had that individual one in addition to the eight previously. So right, so we, we've we just been, just to be clear, we always had nine because we had the one that was where the gallery is. Right, yeah. almost separated out, I believe. So that's the reason why. Um, now that it's shifted. So we just need to mm -hmm. recheck our counts before we yeah. make any promises, but that's all. Yeah. I think Christine has another question. Christine? 
Um, actually, through the SD, we only had eight because there was no other single bathroom. That wasn't added until the last round we talked about because I kept and others asking for um, a, a, a family bathroom that wasn't in this one so that people could have a second option. Um, and just, I think the end goal here is, I, I think a lot of discussions happening because this has never been done before. If you go online, we can't find any of That's these correct. Types of bathrooms because we're on bleeding edge here. And my understanding is the, the plumbing, the Massachusetts Plumbing Board is extremely conservative. They are turning down and refusing some variances if you Google this online. And I want a win where we can go and they might actually buy onto this and, and it won't just get shot down and then oh, we're back to actually redesigning the bathroom again. And um, I also understand that maybe Craig or someone can talk to this, that there's a process that before it even goes to the Massachusetts Plumbing Board, it's, it's not like UMass that they went straight there, that we actually have to go through our own um, building um, commissioner and um, plumber inspector in town. And I'm wondering, have they looked at this? Did they have any opinions? Because they have to buy in and approve it first, my understanding, before it even goes to the mass board. Thank you. Thanks so much. Craig? Uh, that matches my understanding. The first stop is the local plumbing inspector, um, which um, is, a, is a meeting that we can, um, we can arrange. So Christine's question was, have they seen what we are seeing? And I get the answer is not yet. Is that right? Okay. Correct. All right. So any other thoughts, questions about this bathroom design? Now, we are now, uh, again, I want to just follow through on what Christine asked and what Tony suggested. Are we now inclined, Tony, Ellen, Josephine, to the what Tony's just suggested? We we can do that, but as Josephine mentioned, we have to double check the t the toilet yeah. counts. And and Christine, earlier in the SDs, we did have eight. We bumped it up to nine, but we we just have to double check. We can't it, it, we can't have short ourselves on bathrooms. Yep. And the mm -hmm. other thing, just as a side note, in those handicapped stalls, they would have a changing table, a changing fold down changing table as well. So we we have a number of opportunities to locate those. And the dimensions of those two uh, handicapped stalls uh, um, in the lower right are, are they what they roughly what they were in? Was it uh, option? I forgot what the option was. Option C, where after Walter had talked about uh, their accessibility. Um, I, we do have those options. laid out if you wanted to take a look at them. I just want to make sure that Walter, remember in yeah, our meeting last time, had provided very good feedback right. for us. And I just wanted to make sure that we weren't sacrificing, you weren't losing that that feedback um, in, in this. Yeah, no, I, 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 go ahead. Um, if you could bring those up, Josephine, I think that would be helpful. Great. Thanks handy. so much. Thanks so much. Um, Yeah, there weren't weren't dimensions on them, and that's the only reason I couldn't recall yeah. if if they were the same size. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Okay, other questions about the this um, this design. And again, I want to thank FAA uh, and and just follow what Christine said. This it isn't just that this is the, you know, the, it, this is a very complicated. Yes thing for the town um and it's a very important thing that we get right um and you guys know it and you've been fantastic through this as we work our way through it so um and and getting it getting it right is i mean this is going to be the space in after hours so we we really want to make sure it's going to work and that that's kind of why we're mm -hmm. we're running up and then running down so to speak this 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 problem so, Christine, did you have your hand up? No, you. you okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, th thanks so much, Sharon. We understand that we get we get it, Austin. I was trying to hold back, but I can't. So, um, no, just, I know, I know you. you, 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 you. Uh, so, in option D, 
um, those two handicap stalls, I don't think are as large as what Walter was looking for. Yeah. And so if, if you all can figure that out, so you're going to do the toilet counts, going to make sure we have enough. Um, if I don't, I don't know. I hate to forget it. I'll just stop there. If, if you all could make those bathrooms bigger somehow, that would be lovely. Thank you for all your patience. Okay, so um, we haven't quite gotten where you wanted us to be, but I hope we've uh, we've moved the ball a little bit, Alex. Yeah, I just want to say that you know we purposely sent this out to Walter to look at, and Walter was fine with with option D. Um, Great. I guess my thought is, if we only need eight bathrooms, I personally great appreciate the work. I'm happy to sign off on this. If, I mean, if we, if we only need eight bathrooms, the extra space to those that Tony suggested, like I'm comfortable you guys are going to do Great. it right. And if we have to do nine, then I'm also fine signing off on this one. So if that gives enough direction, that's, that's at least where mm -hmm. I'm coming from. George. I agree with Alex. Okay, Sean. I agree with Alex too. The, the one thing I would say, and it just, I'm trying to visualize if I've ever been in a bathroom like this, and it's just going back to Christine's comments about the doors hitting each other. If there's a way to structure in a way where doors wouldn't open and close into each other, I'm just trying to think like if a door's stuck open, is it going to block another door that's closed? It just, um, I haven't, I'm just wondering if there's a way to reconfigure so that doors don't potentially collide. So a part of the cut response is that the door swing either in or out can be looked at. It just depends on like even the family with that swung in. Yes, for, that's like one that way to have... handle it. Okay. Study right. And yes, we did look at that, Tony. What to maximize your space, you swing the door out. But if we want to sacrifice a little space, we right. can swing it in. So that's yes. easy to do. Yes. Okay. So it seems to me that. We have some direction, which is if you can expand, depending on the toilet count, uh, the, in the way in which Tony responded, that seemed to be something the committee would like you to consider. If you can't, then the question is, and I guess I'm just going to ask people to vote so that we can put it in the minutes, whether or not the committee is willing to sign off on option D as it is, if the toilet count re requires that there be nine toilets. Are we ready to decide that? Okay, so in the spirit of moving things, I'm going to make the motion that we ask FAA to consider the alternative that Tony um, outlined. If that is not feasible because of the toilet count, we would ask FAA to go forward with option D. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Christine. I um, still feel that the family bathroom should be put across the hall or this configured so that it could be accessed from the hallway. Um, and not have to maneuver through a room like this. Um, and it gives all people a second choice if they're not comfortable with going into this one room with all genders. Okay, any other suggestions, comments? Okay, the, the motion is to consider the suggestion that Tony made. Uh, and depending on the toilet count, to go with option D. Sharon. Yes. Oh, I, your hand was up. I didn't know whether you had a, whether you had a question. Okay. 
So Sharon wait, votes. I'm so, let, wait, let, let me let me ask. I just want to clarify. So Tony, when when you said just to address what Christine was saying, are are you possibly going to maybe be able to take the family restroom and put it closer to the front the door? That was the idea in that yep. suggestion. Yes. Thank you. Then then yes, I vote yes. Uh, again, I'm not sure. Christine, are you asking a, a I'm asking another question, question, or are you voting? I'm saying that I'm not voting. The question, uh, the motion says that they're going to look into if it can be reduced into down to eight, which at that point they will redesign, or if it has to stay at nine, we go with option D. Correct. Um, so we're really voting on if if it is have to be nine, is it option D? Correct. Okay. So Sharon has already voted. She's voted yes. George. Yes. Christine. No. Uh, Sean. Yes. Sharon. Oh, you've already voted. You don't get to vote again. Um, Alex. I didn't hear what you said, Alex. I'm pushing too many buttons. Yes. Thank you. And Austin votes yes. Okay, Craig. Next on the next discussion point is about the professional renderings. Um, so I saw as Feingold and Alexander was flipping through, I think they've got some recommendations um, okay. just for everyone's benefit. Um, these are outside or in addition to Feingold Alexander's base contract, they did include a, um, a a unit cost of $2,000 per rendering, which is inclusive of both uh, their time as well as the professional renderer's time. And um, for your consideration, we do have a uh, under expenses, a miscellaneous line item uh, for $11,000. And now I'll turn things over to Feingold Alexander. Great. Feingold Alexander. Thank you, Craig. Um, what we'll do is just walk you through um, the plans that we've highlighted um, where we think um, potentially interior renderings and then the exterior renderings um, to follow that um, could okay. potentially be taken. So um, we'll start off at level one. And so we are showing um, a camera spot with the blue circle um, and the direction of the view um, is with these lines. So um, the three spots that we're considering are, of course, the central space, um, where the circ desk and the main stair is looking straight back. Um, another view is taken at the um, children's area, looking towards um, the new portion of the children's space. Yeah. And then one view, which you folks have seen you know, a few weeks back, just a rough um, rendering that we did in-house um, of the um, double vaulted um, existing space of the um, reading room yeah. for the adult fiction, looking straight on towards the back. So these are the three spots that we um, envision would be um, nice renderings and um, wanted to get your feedback on. Um, this is something that you can um, review and take back okay. with you and decide um, for next week would be great if you um, could have a decision on that. Um, so this is um, for level one. I don't know, Tony, if you want to add anything to that or Ellen. No, I think it, I think you explained it pretty well. Okay, so we'll move um, Let's see, Christine, I think has her hand up. Christine, do you have a question about the, this? I oh, did. Um, so you, Josephine. Christine, do you have a question about this? I do for the first floor. I thought. Yeah, please. please. The floor. I just was wondering, yeah, just please. was it considered the middle camera to come from the north looking south, only to give it a different look? You can see the old and the new then looking towards the um, the front entrance. Just was wondering. That's a good question. Um, I don't think we actually looked at that view internally. Um, and Tony, correct me if I'm wrong. I know we looked at a lot of views in the past several years, but I don't I don't know if we actually took a shot there and looked at that. Um, but that's one for consideration. If you want we can to, certainly, to see the existing. 
when we do it, since we have the view set up internally anyways by Revit to guide that, we can take a look at that, uh, Christine, and see if that view makes sense or is a better angle. Sure, we can examine that. Thank you. Great, thanks. Uh, Sean? Um, this is probably a silly question. What's the goal of the rendering? Is it to help the committee make decisions or is it to build sort of build excitement around the project? So um, building excitement, I think Sharon might want to speak to that. I see your hand up. <laughs> yeah, de definitely for the capital campaign committee. Yeah, okay. We've got so, a few million that we need to raise and this is going to help. Okay, so it's not, again, it's not for us to visualize what it looks like or it's, it's for that, okay. Well, also help us, but it, it really will make a difference, I think, um, as Sharon described. Alex? Just a question, comment, I'm not sure which it is, but um, in past renderings, um, you know, the focus of the rendering has been sort of on the architecture, as one would expect, um, but then the furniture or the carpet that's put in there sometimes is at odds with what I think the town sort of expectation is around furniture and I just want to put out there that I, I don't I don't know what furniture gets plugged in but if we could make sure that it, that doesn't wind sort of taking away from uh from things that would be great thanks okay any more any more questions about the renderings on the first level I mean the, this is the uh yeah this is the first level this is the right above the the garden yeah. level yeah right. the page. Street level yep. entry so we're good on this. Do you want to go elsewhere? Yes, to level two. Um, we have been showing this view for yeah. many years to, yes. <laughs> to everyone. Um, yeah. We assume that we would be taking a um, updated rendering view um, from that from that spot again. Um, we did introduce another one here mm -hmm. in the center spot. Um, yep. And again, you know, just wanted to get feedback from the group. Okay. Um, Any questions about the, the proposed rendering, Sharon? Yeah, I'm only wondering why you're not presenting the the two reading rooms, you know, the beautiful spaces. Fair question. Um, so we did have a couple of, um, I think it was, pencil sketches um, way back when that we um, had um, shown renderings of in those spaces. Um, but we are actually saving um, a lot more of the um, existing mm -hmm. infrastructure within the space. And so the rooms actually end up being, it's not one big space anymore. Um, so they are smaller, but we could potentially still look at um, having um having shots done in here so is that just before i call on alex i want to make sure i'm understanding this you're 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 going to show us proposals for renderings that do not increase the cost right so these are additional as well, these are had, these yeah. are all additional Right, these are professional okay. renderings that are in, okay. in addition to. Right, so if you want to do another one, then it's yet another $2,000. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, Alex, before I call on you, I just want to call on Craig. Craig? Uh, yes, sorry if I didn't make that uh, totally clear, but yeah, $2,000 of rendering, and we have uh, $11,000 in a category which I think would be appropriate to use for these renderings. So we got $11,000, so if you guys could pick maybe up to five, the ones you like best, that would be perfect. Okay. Okay, Alex and then George. Alex? Thanks. Um, so I'm sorry, Josephine, the rendering, uh, which is the one you know, sort of off the staircase, since we're going back to sort of the original design, is there, like, I know it's a pretty rendering, but don't we sort of already have it? Like, is there going to be a significant enough change to the rendering that it makes sense to pay additional money for that rendering? Well, um, all of the statute roof is gone. So that's a significant change for the lighting, et cetera. Um, okay. 
and um, I guess maybe Tony can speak a little bit more about the process of how we work with the renderer. Yeah, um, I think to follow what Craig is saying, sometimes when we work with the renderers in our own time, we can save a little bit in bundling them. So we might be able to pick up a sixth rendering for the $11,000 cost. We have to redo that, but that, you're correct. That this one view, five, that's looking from the one we did previously, uh, the render can take what they did and probably within the constraints modify. So I think Alex, we can probably grab a total of six renderings for the 11K fee. Mm -hmm. Good. All in. Okay. And, I, and I just want to echo um, Sharon's thoughts. I, I think it would be valuable to have a rendering of a restored space, which one we pick. You know, I'm amenable to the group, but I, I do think there's value in that. Good. Thank you. George? Yeah, I'm literally going to echo what Alex just says. I think a rendering of, even though the rooms are going to be smaller, I think a rendering of that reading room would be very uh, positive for the people who uh, want to know more about the restoration of the original spaces. Because that, in particular, that is a space that most people have not seen. All right. Okay, any other questions about these, this level, these renderings? We have one more page to go through. Sure. Just going back to the exterior renderings. No. Um, we will need to update these, of course. Um, we have the two views that we've been looking at for several years um, yep. from Amity Street in the rear. Um, the one that we have to introduce, we believe, for you know historic reasons, mm -hmm. um, is the one on the opposite side of Amity Street, looking the other direction towards the library. Um, so uh, again, we just want to get sign off that um, these are the exterior renderings that everybody agrees to moving forward with. Uh, I think I see Alex. Alex? So I don't know if Berkshire Design Group is going to be giving us separate renderings, but again, the, so the renderings that we've gotten, the one from the Stronghouse, show, uh, I mean, they sort of have taken away all of the landscapings and the grading issues that we're dealing with. And so again, if it's possible to have a more accurate representation of what you're really gonna be looking at from that angle, it, I certainly would appreciate it because I still don't quite understand how, we're, how all the grading is working in the back there. I see Ellen nodding. So I take it that that was a, an I agree with note. you. I, I, would, I agree with Alex. I think it right. would be helpful to have that updated. Okay. So the question that we are being asked is, uh, are we satisfied with this plan for renderings? And do we want to include the one extra um, in the restored rooms? That's what I'm hearing. And again, yep, Alex? The only, um, and I, we may need to look at them again. So we're not showing the team space. Um, and I feel like there are, I mean, we had over, of, of the of the 2,000 people that sent us in responses, um, 1,000 of them were teens. And so I I guess I, I just want to be cognizant of how big a deal it is that we're adding a teen space. And so I, I, don't, I don't know what rendering you would give up in exchange, but I think there might be some value to that. I might make a suggestion. This first view that's taken head on to the entrance there, we eliminate that and substitute the team space. Because in some ways, the other view is kind of the more, I might hate to use the word money shot, but it is that's there. And so that other view probably is not so critical. And I think to your point, Alex, the team space is a program driver for sure. So are we all comfortable with what Tony's just suggested? Ellen, are you comfortable with Tony's, what Tony's just suggested? Muted, Ellen. Yes, yes. And it just, I, you know, I was adding up the number of, it's a lot of renderings we're doing, so. A lot of renderings. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say, they just showed us nine what right. nine or That's, ten options so we still yeah. have to we still have to bring it down to six right. to keep it with it to keep it within the budget yeah but, but and, 
And, and is there no other use for that budget? I just want to be clear that that's the only use for the miscellaneous budget, Craig. Uh, no, miscellaneous um, is to capture anything that doesn't appear in the other budget line items. So we have budget line item for advertising. We have budget line item for printing. Uh, miscellaneous is just kind of other things. And so this is the type of thing that would crop up. You could call it, you know, uh, publicity imagery, something like that. Mm -hmm. So one, just to keep in mind, and maybe this is helpful, there is, in our mind, there's two buckets for the renderings. One is to help with the fundraising. Yeah. Um, those are critical. And the other one is to help with this town to understand what the library is going to look like. The best thing is to put those together as as one one package of renderings. Um, and that's probably the most cost effective. And we we do. A, yeah. You know, Tony, you can chime in. We do a lot of projects that involve fundraising and it, it the renderings go a long way. Yeah, in fact, they're really critical. And uh, what I, is, you know, so that's one hat. It, it, you had, so consider that. What renderings are going to help you sell the project and get the most uh, support in terms of financial? As an, yep. as an aside, when we've done rendering proposals for clients, because of the hybrid nature of some of these uh, pre-existing renderings modifying mm -hmm. versus brand new ground up renderings from scratch. So it isn't just a quite exactly a 2K per every rendering breakdown, as Craig suggested, because we find ourselves, you know, eternally saying, okay, there are some cost savings that can benefit, of course, if there's a pre-existing rendering. And the render also fee is lower because they're reworking the view. So I, I think to your question earlier, Austin, first determine the number of views. So we have, I, I told up, we have six renderings on the interior, three on the exterior, yeah. that's nine and yep. replace the young adult for that one, right? So we have nine views. Um, I, I think if we come to some kind of agreement with you, we can probably find some hybrid cost parameter. You know, will it exceed 11,000? Yes, but it won't necessarily be 18,000 if we're talking, you know, pure dollars. But so Tony, do we, we ever do nine views? That's a lot. Yeah, we're doing, we're doing 11 for a synagogue right now. Yes, we, we have that. exceeded. We've done even more than that for some projects. Okay. Yes. And we're hoping that three of them are sort of um, just working. Right, but that, that that back one that Alex had commented on, and I agree, it yep. it that it looks distorted on what people are seeing. Yeah. And and it should it wasn't intentional, and I think it just needs to be brought into reality. Okay. Right. All right. Let's see whether we can make some progress here, Sharon. I just wanted to clarify, you're not looking for answers tonight, right? We have more time. No. We don't have more time? No, or we you, don't. you do. You have okay. more time. <laughs> uh, because I would, I would like to ask our capital campaign committee what, what they think. Yes. And I know one of them is in the, in the audience. And so when Austin asks for public comment, there will be more comments. So thank you. Great. Great. Uh -huh. I think what we can do is update these to what we were just talking about tonight yeah. and yeah. send you the pdf and then you can yeah. use that to discuss during the next week great great okay. sean yeah again I, I see i understand the need for renderings i'm just i think what i need to think about more is does it make sense for it to come out of the project budget or does it make sense for it to be paid for from the capital campaign as a uh, cost of the fundraising huh. effort um just given what we know about our project budget and how tight our project budget is mm -hmm. is, the, is that the right spot for it I'm not sure I understand the difference because every dime that the capital campaign is going to make minus its costs is going to be financing our project. But uh, okay. Uh, okay. So Sharon is going to get from you a PDF, a revised PDF. Sharon's going to take it to the capital campaign committee, get their, get their views. Okay. Anything else to be said about renderings? Mr. Craig? Uh, thank you, Austin. There's uh, one more thing that was a, a follow-up, the uh, tally report. So there was a request a couple of weeks back for an update to the tally report. Uh, and in speaking with the design team, uh, that's actually another item that is not in their base contract. But in speaking with them, um, the right timing for that might be at the end of this design development phase. Uh -huh. um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, we can 
you know, say between now and next week or one of the upcoming meetings, we can work with the design team to uh, find out what the cost for that might be um, and mm -hmm. present that to you. Great, that would be very helpful. And that's all I have. Okay. Item C says determine next meeting. Sharon. Says determine next meeting, the ninth yeah, or the sixteenth. That, that's Craig. I don't. I don't know what that means. So, <laughs> uh, if if all the decisions had been made tonight um, for each of the items, uh, there might have been the possibility to skip next week's yeah. meeting. Um, but I think yeah. there are still some things that we want to talk about next week. Correct. So we will plan to meet on the 9th of February at four thirty. Okay. On the agenda is the design report from the design subcommittee. Christine. Um, there is none, but I, I would like to ask if the newest uh, uh, option D bathroom could be emailed to all of us. So we Great. have a copy of it. Yep, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Alex, outreach. Okay. Uh, I've received no cars. There's no correspondence that I know of. Uh, no topic not anticipated that I know of. Now an opportunity for public comment. There are seven attendees and we're grateful for your attention. Okay, I see no, no public comment. Again, I wanna thank FAA for your uh, good work um, on the project and say again how exciting it is to be at this, seeing the interior palette stuff is really very exciting. So thank you for that. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you, God willing, next week. And, uh, well, don't laugh, don't laugh. Melanie. <laughs> I know it's going to be cold, Aust, but let's <laughs> hope that's okay. If we make it through the weekend with this cold weather, that's coming. In any case, good luck to everybody. So let's, thank you, everyone. Let's, Thanks, let's, 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 let's adjourn. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks. Good night. Bye bye.